So I've been working quite a lot on uh, the current sort of uh, round of AI innovations and so on. And uh, uh, she just wrote a, a piece that's turning into a little tiny book about how does, how does chat GPT, what is it doing and why does it work? Which I kind of more or less understand and the interest, the answer is scientifically interesting. But one of the things that leads to is the whole question of, so what's going to happen with us and AIs and, you know, are we, are we in the, the last years of our species, so to speak, and is it all AIs all the way out and so on? And I've been, was been thinking about that. In fact, I've just been working on that last, last few days. And um, I was, I've been going through these kind of waves of, of, do I understand what's going on? Do I not understand what's going on? Is it all doom and gloom? Or is there, uh, is there some opportunity for, 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 for sort of us? And I, I've kind of come to realize that uh, a core idea that comes out of basic science I've done, the idea of computational irreducibility, is probably what's going to kind of save us all. And it's kind of the same, it's the, the computational irreducibility is this idea that just because you know the program that something is running according to, just, uh, just because you know the rules that something is operating according to, it doesn't mean you can immediately kind of jump ahead and, and say what the thing is going to do. There's this kind of irreducible computational process that's involved in working out what the consequences of some set of rules will be. And it's that, you know, that irreducible computational process is what I think is kind of represents the passage of time in the universe for us, et cetera. But the fact that there's this kind of irreducibility, the fact you can't figure out what the outcome is without essentially following each step just has tons and tons of consequences. And one of the consequences is it's kind of, I, I was, uh, just thinking about it actually this this morning, uh, the um, uh, it's kind of the question: Is there an apex intelligence, so to speak? You know, we we talk about in you know trophic levels in ecology and so on. You know, the apex predator. It's kind of like: Is there is there a winning organism in some sense? Is there a winning sort of path to uh, uh, to sort of where where it's you know this AI is the apex AI, so to speak. And what I realized is that computational irreducibility shows that that will never be the case. That there's always, it's always some, just sort of for the same kinds of reasons that uh, there's always more stuff to be invented. You never get to the point where all the things that you could, so, so in a sense, an invention, okay, when we think about sort of the passage of time in the universe and so on, the, um, uh, it's some, um, uh, there's the sort of irreducible computational process and the 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 in a sense one of the things that is important to us is at least in the current state of things we live only finite lives we have only a finite amount of time so the question is what can we achieve in that amount of time and so anything that lets us kind of jump ahead anything that lets us kind of beat a bit of computational irreducibility and sort of get more value from the time we have is a win and so in a sense uh, you know the whole raft of automation technology even paradigms and ideas, they're all sort of stories of how do we jump ahead a bit? How do we, you know, with automation, we, instead of, you know, having to assemble all the pieces of your, of your smartphone or something and then use it, things like that, you just have the smartphone. It's already assembled. You can, uh, uh, you can, um, uh, yes, just like that, right? Um, you can, you can kind of, um, you know, you can, you can leverage the fact that you've sort of already made this this kind of computationally reducible jump to get something done. So, same thing with ideas and, and paradigms and so on. You could say, well, there are all these particular detailed things one can say, but then one realizes there's some abstraction one can make that allows one to kind of jump over all those details and get to get to the result. It's, it's. I think it's, it's a um, uh, this, this. So, in a sense, the the things that end up being of great value for us in technology, in the development of ideas. There are all these kinds of ways to, to jump ahead. And the question is, are there only a finite number of, of little jump ahead things to find? Or is there an infinite collection of such things to find? And it's a sort of a, a theoretical consequence of computational reducibility. There are always an infinite number of possible pockets of computational reducibility. There's never an end to inventions you can make. There's always another thing you can imagine doing where you know some bizarre configuration of black holes that nobody ever thought about lets you do some weird hack in the universe or whatever else. 
there's never you're never going to be able to say we've invented everything that can be invented everything every sort of way of of jumping ahead in the universe has already been found and i think that's that sort of part of what um uh the um part of what one realizes is that um the uh um uh, that, that's sort of the reason that when we start thinking about kind of the you know will the ai eventually take over and it's just like we're done now you know this ai has figured out everything you know there's nothing more to do okay so there's another thing i figured out recently so this is my last few days mm -hmm. but um i i've been curious you know okay we all you know people do jobs they do different kinds of work and so on and things evolve and there's more automation and the question is what happens to all these different kinds of work that people do and you know the the pattern in history tends to be some technology enables some particular domain of work like example you know telephone switchboard operators enabled by the invention of telephones okay so for a while telephone switchboard operators are a thing and there are more and more people who do that kind particular kind of thing and then uh, telephone switching gets automated and nobody needs human telephone switchboard operators anymore. But what happens? Well, a lot more telephone switching happens. And then we build this whole stack of telecommunications technology on top of that possibility. You know, if, if, if now there were human telephone switchboard operators, you know, every one of us would have to be one of those in order to support the, um, you know, the traffic that exists. But so what happened is in a sense, there's a, the, you know, there's this way of doing things that is done sort of by hand. There are lots of details about how it's done. Then there's kind of a, a level of automation, almost a level of abstraction that's generated that then sort of opens up another frontier of possibilities. And so I think the picture, and I was actually trying to verify this from actual data on, on jobs in the US for the last 150 years, but the data is rather messy and it's a big, big pain to, to clean it up, which I mean, our technology is, is the best there is for, for doing that, but it's still kind of a pain. But in any case, the, the, um, uh, the thing that I'm sort of trying to understand is this process where you, you define a certain set of things that can be done, you automate those things, then the automation kind of opens a new frontier. And the thing to realize is that at that frontier, there are always many possibilities about where one can go. There's, there's, that, that opens up a lot of possible things. Like, like in current times, you know, the, the LLM world has sort of opened up another set of possibilities for what AI can do and so on. And then the question is, well, well which of those paths will actually be taken? And you kind of realize that this is, this is a thing where there's no, there's no fundamental answer to this. There's no AI that's gonna come in with some you know, bag of mathematical axioms or something to say, this is the right answer. This is something where there's sort of arbitrary choices to make. And those choices are, you know, that's, that's the place where sort of, while we humans are in the loop, so to speak, that's the place where sort of we get to knit ourselves into the, into the sort of computationally irreducible history of, uh, of, of what happens. I mean, this, this, is the, this is the thing that, you know, again, if there wasn't computational irreducibility, the big AI could come in and just say, I figured it all out, history's over, you know, the answer is 42 or whatever it might be. Um, and uh, uh, that, that's, um, uh, but this phenomenon of computational irreducibility just says that can't happen. It says there'll always be sort of a, a, a need for sort of, in a sense, creative decisions you can think of them of as for sort of which direction to go. So anyway, the, the, it's, to me, it's interesting that these things that sort of come out of fundamental science end up, you know, enmeshing themselves in, in sort of uh, all these different questions about, about the world and, and sort of the human condition and so on.